Okay, so I hold a lot of USDC, but after it fell from $1 to 87 cents in March, that really shook my world. And it made me wonder, are my stable coins still safe to use? And if so, which ones are the safest? Now in just a minute, I'm gonna go down the list of the top five stable coins to see which ones are still safe. But first, we gotta start with something even more important than that. And that'd be the black swan risks that affect all stable coins, regardless of their minute differences. And the first of those risks would be losing access to the reserves behind the stable coin, which is what happened to USDC, by the way. Circle, the parent company of USDC, kept nearly 10% of their reserves in Silicon Valley Bank. And unless you've been in a cave for the past few months, you'll know that SVB collapsed in an epic bank run filled by Twitter. And even though Circle was able to recover those funds, the whole ordeal proved that a stablecoin is only as good as its reserves. So when we go down that list of stablecoins later, we're for sure going to look at the quality of their reserves. Now, another existential black swan risk is that central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, come along and replace our current stablecoins. I mean, the Biden administration has been thinking about creating one of these for a while now. And Jerome Powell himself said that if we had one, quote, you wouldn't need stablecoins and you wouldn't need cryptocurrencies anymore. So yeah, but honestly, I don't see this as too big of a risk for a few different reasons. And even if they chose to create one, we'll probably have time to convert our stablecoins before they're fully replaced. But my third black swan risk is that the US dollar itself devalues. Because most of these stable coins are pegged to the USD, right? So even if they're 100% safe and secure, it doesn't matter if the USD behind it starts to devalue or hyperinflate. We basically have to trust that the US-centric monetary system will hold up. And a lot of people are starting to doubt that. For example, the former CTO of Coinbase, Balaji Srinivasan, bet $1 million that the USD would crash and hyperinflate by June. Now, do I personally think that will happen? No, I do not. But if I lived in a country whose currency is not USD, then I'd keep a close eye on the exchange rate at all times if I were holding stablecoins. Okay, so those are the three risks that we need to be prepared for if we truly want to protect ourselves in all scenarios. But now let's get to the good stuff, the top five stablecoins. We're going to look at each of them from three different perspectives, how stable they are, how strong their reserves are, and how decentralized they are. So kicking things off with USDT, there's over $75 billion worth of that circulating and it's supported on most chains, so it definitely is accessible. Its price stability has also been excellent throughout its history. It's been stable for nearly a decade now, but during that time, it's also de-pegged a handful of times. If you look at this chart, USDT lost its peg here in May of 2022 when Luna collapsed, and also here in November during the FTX collapse. Now, even though USDT recovered from those and has been stable since, there is something about its reserves that bothers me. So Tether claims that USDT is backed one-to-one -one with US dollars or cash equivalents. And to be fair, their redemptions have always worked. But in 2019, we found out that they had used nearly a billion dollars from their reserves to fill a hole in their sister company's balance sheet. That made it pretty much impossible to trust them. And even though they do assurance reports nowadays, it's still not a proper audit by a top accounting firm. So we don't actually know if they've messed up their reserves in any way or if they have some secret liabilities. I think this meme puts it perfectly. Like when USDC was struggling, everyone was worried because we could see exactly what was going on. But USDT on the other hand is so opaque, we can't actually see if there are any issues with their reserves which I guess in a way makes it better for investor confidence. Anyways, despite those concerns, I still think USDT is one of the safest options out there. It is the biggest stable coin. It's pretty much used everywhere in crypto. But if I had to pick a safer option, it would be this next one, USDC. Yep, even though USDC had that scary DPEG, I still have a lot of faith in it. It's currently the second biggest stablecoin with over $35 billion circulating, and its price has been stable for many years. Now, it did DPEG a few times like USDT, but it has regained its peg every single time. And any stablecoin that has their reserves in a bank is only as safe as the bank itself. That applies to both USDT and USDC, but Circle works with players like BlackRock and BNY Mellon, whereas we don't even know know which podunk bank Tether actually uses. Also, Circle does a proper audit every year and has monthly attestations to prove their reserves. So we know for a fact that their reserves are where they say they are. That's why if I did have to choose between USDT and USDC, 
I'd lean towards USDC, but I do use both of them to be honest. Now this next stable coin, I'm going to strongly recommend that you avoid it. But before we get there, a quick shout out to our video sponsor, Crypto Watch. Crypto Watch is like a Bloomberg terminal for all you crypto traders out there. But unlike Bloomberg, their terminal is way more affordable and they have a free tier too. Anyway, some cool features include trading on all your exchanges from a single place, getting a bird's eye view of your entire portfolio, and doing all the fancy charting and TA that your heart desires. Seriously, whether you are a beginner or expert trader, CryptoWatch has features that can help you get an edge on other traders. If you want to try them out, use my link below. If you want to find out more, then watch my full review video that I'll also include below. All right, back to stable coins. And my third one would be BUSD or Binance USD. That's the third biggest stable coin with over $6 billion circulating. They used to have a much higher market cap, like four times more than now. But there was also some drama about how BUSD was under collateralized on non-Ethereum chains. So regulators stepped in and forced Binance and Paxos to wind it all down. Now, if you hold BUSD right now, I wouldn't be too worried because Paxos has said that they'd continue to redeem one BUSD on Ethereum for $1 until 2024 at the very least. But as the stablecoin is on its way out, I would still recommend converting it when you get a chance. And one option that you can convert it to is our next stablecoin, DAI. So DAI is actually quite different from the previous three because it's actually decentralized, whereas the other ones were all super centralized. DAI is the fourth biggest stablecoin as over $5 billion circulating. Its peg has been really stable over the years, but there is something quite unique about how it maintains its peg. So DAI is backed by other coins such as USDC and ETH that are stored in a smart contract. When someone deposits those into the smart contract, they get DAI in return. And one interesting thing is that you have to deposit more than you receive. So DAI is actually over collateralized. For example, you have to deposit around $1,700 worth of ETH to get $1,000 worth of DAI. And when you return that DAI, you get your ETH back. Also, because DAI is issued and managed by smart contracts, it cannot be blacklisted at all. So DAI has scale, price stability, it's over collateralized and it's decentralized. So it seems like the perfect stablecoin, right? Well, not so fast. Nearly half of DAI's reserves is USDC. So if Circle chose to blacklist the underlying USDC, it's game over for DAI. And that's not just FUD. Circle is based in the US. So if the government tells them to blacklist something, they have to comply. That's why DAI is only as good as the USDC backing it. And because DAI has to be over collateralized, it's really hard for it to achieve the same scale as USDT or USDC. So until the basket of assets behind DAI becomes more diverse and relies less on USDC, I would prefer to use other stablecoins, like perhaps this next one, which some exchanges have been moving to after BUSD got axed and that would be TUSD by Archblock. That's the fifth biggest stablecoin, but it only has $2 billion circulating. That's 40 times less than Tether and 15 times less than USDC. That is quite small. And that's with its market cap doubling since Binance switched to it. Now, TUSD is redeemable one-to-one -one with US dollars, but overall, they're still less transparent than other centralized stablecoin issuers. For example, Archblock has a complicated corporate structure, and we're not really sure which banks hold their reserves. Also, TUSD has had some weird on-chain behavior in the past. It's been burned and minted more frequently than USDT and USDC, and it seems like its largest users were Justin Sun and Alameda Research. Yep, you heard that right. That was Sam Bankman-Fried's infamous hedge fund. And that's why some people have speculated that TUSD is mainly used for wash trading. So out of the five stablecoins on this list, I would trust this one the least. Phew, that was a lot about stablecoins, wasn't it? But you're probably wondering, what should I do with all this info? Well, as we saw, none of the stablecoins out there are perfect. Compared to fiat currencies, they're less stable, and compared to Bitcoin, they're far less decentralized. And if they're not decentralized, then what's the point? Well, in my opinion, stablecoins aren't meant to be a decentralized store of value. I see them more as on and off ramps between traditional finance and crypto. So if you're gonna use them to trade or do stuff in DeFi, then sure, have at it. But I wouldn't recommend storing all your wealth in stablecoins for the long haul. Now, if you do decide to use them for trading purposes, then be sure to check out CryptoWatch as well by using my link below. 